हेलो फ्रेंड्स होप यू आर सेफ एंड साउंड इन दिस लॉकडाउन आई एम रोशैल पोटकर बेस्ड इन बॉम्बे आई राइट ऑन वेरियस थीम्स बट टुडे आई हैव सिलेक्टेड पोएम्स दैट आर सूप फॉर द स्पिरिट मैनी इयर्स गो आई रेड अबाउट द अडल्ट और रंगुटान हु वुड लिव सोलो फॉर इयर्स इन अ फॉरेस्ट रिसर्चर्स फाउंड दैट इट कुड स्टे अ लोन क्वाइट हारमोनियसली इन नेचर only because its mother in infancy had held it tight to its chest that emotional warmth was enough so here is this poem today for you on emotional warmth called solitary like light leaves after years iterating the static of spheres the orangutan exhales warmth monographing embrace into winter's foliage as time loses scope young as a black square nurtured for years at his mother's teeth beat emerging from dark art growing from snugness luxurious as a shaft it goes deep into the forest light into cave to live alone for a thousand years no ruffle or safety of spring meets its spirit yet as strong as an inflorescent flame it cinders while winter speaks in autumn's barbed tongue my next poem is on our relationships are they stable now that we are on the lockdown we probably know more about their instability or their stability I have wondered what on what other things on earth are unstable in their raw forms and today I present to you raw forms from the first smells of wet mud to this heartache you were the perfect shaft of sun that passed through my stained glass window so I could watch the carcass of a fallen rainbow it is not you alone that caused this misfortune It takes two distinct kinds to mix and merge to produce something different. People with uncommon atomic arrangements. Like tin and copper, nickel and palladium, copper and zinc to crystallize into bronze, white gold, brass. Take aluminum for example. They say it is soft, malleable, but with another softy, copper it becomes the hard strong aluminum alloy take acetylene that blends with oxygen to become the hottest burning fuel take chocolate with its vanilla and cocoa gradients or milk in its tea variants rain running on diverse mud land soil you get the drift i don't want you to change i don't want me to change but there are gaps in our atomic lattice sieves large enough through which i fall and bruise most things in its raw forms are not stable diamond platinum potassium gold sugar or love i have tried leaving i really have but like a soul not allowed to leave its battered accident body i am a molecule pulled back our story is not over So stay with me until we are heated by ennui melted by its reasons hardened by the seasons softened by its perceptions one day our lattices shall carry our faith and patience our knowing of each other stronger than our arms ever could we will weld and meld to form the perfect imperfect stable substance My third poem years earlier I had written a part of it but it remained an incomplete sketch buried deep inside me almost like a reservoir when i was going through a low that's when this poem called out to me again and together we completed it it is for you today especially i want to share this to tell you that we have deep reserves of love faith belief within ourselves that we can draw out to the surface 
when we truly need it. Lake Vostok. Under a rock bed of ice, the last frontiers of amphibians and mermaids hooking up, maybe to other pulsating ecosystems. This coldest place on earth is not easy to plumb. Its skin stark, body cold, water white. Discovered by ice-piercing aerial radar surveys. They say there has to be a longing for the supernatural that kept this lake buried for 15 million years under a research station. Pristine water reserve, smoothed by a network of rivers subglacial. Ice world. Today we have found a reservoir of resilience. Preserve of rebel. Faith against all obstacles. Of the life she carries microbial. Despite high pressure, constant cold, low nutrient, high oxygen and absolutely no sun. Under thick sheets, sealed and insulated, in total darkness. Like a potent self-belief system, latent survival instinct. A lake holding comportment, grace, coat, with naked experience and enormous wisdom. This poem was also etched on a glass pane in the Pathfoot building, House of Words, University of Stirling, Scotland. My next poem, Abstruse, is quite an abstract piece of a play of light and shadow. I don't write that much abstract, but here you go, a contemplation. Abstruse. Light fell through one window in a house once, bending through thicket. Rooms drowning in mirage-like silence. Its inhabitants seeing alphabet, debating in diverse languages, with visions turning rods and cones. Rooms with lesser light had shadows flickering in the braille of grey, with books melting into roots, and ancient knowledge drew out superstition. They held books upside down, forming new letters and language. Rooms in total darkness, made for shapes of fantabulism. Now inmates met in common room, sometimes as bedfellas, beings of dark lusted for fruit. Clashes don't need vocabulary. The dark room people used gibberish. The light room, polemics. The dining room was in half light, recording these mix mismatches, barbaric or warm up. As a dark room people amplified dread, the light room people argued over synonyms unease, terror, jolt, boogie. Then one day, the light itself retreated, leaving the mansion. The people of light couldn't go back to the dark. So the people of dark inherited the whole house. And this happened in every corner of every earth. The metamorphosis of the moth is in the murmur of the flame. This next poem, sometimes when I think of the metamorphosis of humans or of cities or of the world, it's an old poem called Transmogrified. He was first a snake and was in love with her a she-snake. And then he molted and after he molted, he was a turtle and he met another she-turtle and fell in love with her. When he deshelled after years, he became a four-legged animal, black spots sprouting over his fur and he fell for a leopard. He moved this way through the jungles, the savannas, the deserts, the skies, through the oceans, the air, the land and beneath it, changing and changing and meeting and falling in love with new she-species. The lovers he left behind did not change. They were who they were, the same. They were individualistic, so to speak, but now they were also heartbroken, 
and full of hate for him. The one who had left in the middle of sometimes passionate lovemaking. They had no idea how it was to live so many lives in one life like him. To take no breaks with rebirths from being mosquito to man. Sometimes evolution and progress is so fast. Blessings and curses are all mixed up and one. And here is my last poem for the evening before I take in your questions and answers. This is my all-time favorite poem. Maybe it was one of the first that I wrote. I think I wrote it in response to uh, the world when it told me to slow down because I thought you need to be only in tune with the gush and rush of blood in your veins. You don't need to follow any other time, just your time. And from here came something called a poem on transience, timely. Don't pick a wilted flower. Even graves are dressed in fresh ones. Heart beating petals over dead bone and you ask me to wait. Have you seen a rose? Red ripe, raw like wine. Does it wait its turn in the bouquet? Its time and place is the morning when from the blessings of a stem it oozes nectar, life juices strumming from its veins. After that, a bookmark in the pages, memory aromas in translucent perfume bottles. Don't ask a rose to wait. There is no time in its petals, only the saga of one sunrise and one sundown. Thank you, my friends. Do let me know. Let me read your comments to see what can I answer or speak back. I am following your comments. If there's any special request, uh, I need to see. Do you all have any special request for me? Okay, in that case, I would like to thank you. It was a pleasure sharing my poetry with you. I would like to thank Ashwini Kumar for curating this and including me as also Kitab Khana and Mansi Shetty. You can find more of my poems in my books, Paper Asylum, Four Degrees of Separation, Copies in Kitab Khana or on Amazon. There's, I'm awaiting the publishing of my third book of poetry, The Inglorious Coins of the Counting House. I'm eagerly awaiting it. With this, I will take your leave, wishing you good spirits in these times. Keep going. We are going to get there across this crisis, across the virus, and we will get there with resilience. We have deep reservoirs of resi resilience. Thank you.